it's Friday. Uh, my name is Carl Monaghan. This is a Friday Takeaway. This is the ongoing podcast called Pelvic Pain Natters, uh, solely dedicated to male pelvic pain conditions, um, unpacking some myths and debunking some interesting facts, supporting patients, educating therapists, um, and basically just everything uh, associated and related to male pelvic pain conditions, including CPPS, that's chronic pelvic pain syndrome, and chronic prostatitis. All right, today I'm continuing the theme around pelvic floor dysfunction. Um, thank you very much for everyone who's commented. Loving the feedback, um, loving the loving the love. <laughs> Keep it coming. Um, it's always nice to know that there are people out there. I can see people are watching it um, and listening to it. This pod, this podcast that is, but it's always nice to get some interaction. So, so do feel free to reach out. Maybe today might be the episode where you just decide to drop me an email. Um, you can reach out at info at pelvicpainmatters.com or you can comment um, on any of the channels that you are finding this podcast on. All right, pelvic floor dysfunction and trigger points. Uh, last week I looked at um, some sexual dysfunction, gave you some facts and figures around that. So pelvic floor dysfunction, remember, we're just isolating the pelvic floor and just focusing on it as an individual entity. And I'm exploring and, and explaining why that's not always helpful um, uh, um, in treating, successfully treating and successfully overcoming this condition. If we do want to see um, ongoing success, then it's important. I think you get my get the picture now, but seeing the bigger picture, looking beyond just the lab meat, if that doesn't make sense to you, go back and listen to, I think it's three podcast episodes before. This is episode 41. We're racking them up. We are moving forwards with this and building momentum now as well. So pelvic floor dysfunction and <clears throat> trigger points. Um, and if you don't know what a trigger point is, that's absolutely fine. I'll give you um, the description of what they are uh, and explore this a little bit more in detail, including my own experience um, as a therapist, as a patient, um, and how they can form part of recovery. But maybe we need to re-look at them or look at them under a different light anyway. So actually, pelvic floor dysfunction um, and trigger points go together really, really, really well. Because what, what pelvic floor dysfunction typically suggests is that all of the issues sit, all of the issues associated with pelvic symptoms sit within the musculature, that's the pelvic floor of the pelvis. And the reason that patients have their pelvic symptoms is because of pelvic floor dysfunction. I'm here to challenge that. I'm here to say like, there's more going on than just the muscles. And if we only focus on the muscles, we're missing out on so many more opportunities. But trigger points work. Uh, so let's give the description. So a trigger point is a hyper irritable spot, a palpable nodule in the taut bands of the skeletal muscles fascia. Direct compression or muscular com traction can elicit jump sign, local tenderness, local switch response and referred pain, which usually responds with a pain pattern distant from the spot. And that pain pattern is supposed to be replicable in every single individual. So this model, um, Trevell and Simmons, Simons, were, were two pioneers um, of the trigger point um, movement. And it was suggested that every single patient would have these replicable, if they were musculoskeletal problems, would have these replicable patterns of trigger points, like a blueprint that every single body would adhere to. We're not all blueprints. We have individualities. We have characteristics that, that um, separate us from others. And that's a great thing. So we're not blueprints. None of us have textbook medical textbook bodies with all the organs and all the muscles and all the bones and all the ligaments and the tendons and the organs and all of those bits and pieces might have said organs there twice um in the same space at the same spot we're not like that so already it kind of makes me feel a bit uncomfortable that we're using a blueprint for every single patient now trigger points and myofascial 
trigger points. That's um, tender spots within the myo muscle fascia, myofascial, and the fascia is the surrounding. It's lo it looks a bit like cling film. And the cling film can surround muscles, it can surround organs. There's deep fascia and superficial fascia. Um, and I studied this, and I even taught this, more on this later on, for many, many years. Um, but they, but myofascial trigger points and pelvic pain dysfunction go hand in hand. They're just, they're a ma marriage made in heaven. They both fit the same model. Pain is, is caused by tight muscles and trigger points. And if we treat the tri the, if we treat the tight muscles and the trigger points in the pelvis and the pelvic floor, then that pelvic floor dysfunction goes away. Now that is a model that is used uh, and has been used globally for a long, long time in the treatment of male pelvic pain conditions. Treat the trigger points, um, calm down, uh, stretch out tight muscles, release tight muscles, um, and we start to see a reduction in symptoms. But it's not that straightforward. Some patients, don't get me wrong, some patients really benefit from this treatment, and that's absolutely fine. And and I and and thank goodness for that. All right, thank goodness for that. But my issue comes when the message is your pain is caused solely by the trigger points in your pelvic floor, and that is what is causing your pelvic floor dysfunction too narrow it's too small pain is way 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 more complex than that now if you know my story you will know that i had pain in the space where my right testicle used to be i had pain in midair i lost a testicle during my um uh, the onset of my pelvic pain due to a massive infection but i had symptoms uh, in the space where my right testicle used to be phantom ball pain uh, um, so to speak uh, phantom limb pain made us realize that that um pain is made us <laughs> made the community um very aware that that pain is much much more complex than just an issue within the tissue and that's what trigger points suggest that there's an issue within the tissue you treat the issue in the tissue and then the issue dissipates and goes away so um, like I said, I, I used to teach this to undergrads and for three years I taught this to um, foundation degree students um, about trigger point therapy, about myofascial release. One of the reasons I stepped away from teaching is because the curriculum was fixed and it couldn't be changed and I was um, getting more and more upset that I was teaching students out of date information. So I, I moved away from teaching um, in that capacity in a formal education setting some eight years ago now, I think it was, um, seven and a half years ago. Um, and as a therapist, and I've been a hands-on therapist now for 24 years, um, I studied massage extensively in, in all kinds of different settings around the world. Very, very fortunate. Um I, I was I was brilliant under my own admission. I was excellent at treating trigger points. I could find them, I could locate them, I could find the referral patterns, and I had patients who came back to me week in and week out to get their trigger points released. But they didn't feel better, and they only felt better. These patients, and I'm not just talking pelvic pain patients here, I'm talking a range of different musculoskeletal presentations, sports injuries, um, they only felt better when they were in my treatment room and they might feel better for a day afterwards. I'd release their trigger points. They'd feel better. Oh, that's exactly the spot. I can really feel that referring to that location where my symptoms are. And I feel much, much better afterwards. Often it would be very, very painful, very, very tender, uh, deeply unpleasant, hard work for me. Um, but as a business model, it worked incredibly well. I had a long, long list of patients coming back to see me every single week. And again, that started to feel a bit wrong as well. I want my patients to feel empowered. I want patients to know that there are things that the you, if you are a patient, can do yourself that make you feel much better. And it's you not just relying on me, that there's a, there is some ownership here of your own recovery. You're not passing responsibility onto me to make you better. I want you to be able to feel better by yourself. And you can do this every single day. A little bit more on this later on around trigger points and what you might want to do. So again, what are you being told? 
are you being told or if you're being told that the cause of your pelvic pain is trigger points and we need to use myofascial release i would really question that and i'm going to put a very long but very very well researched article in the link uh, to this podcast do read it please 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 read it if you are getting trigger point therapy at the moment or you are giving trigger point therapy please read the article it's so valuable see what else is going on be informed that's really really helpful um now they can be really helpful all right and i'm, I'm going to go against a little bit about what i said here but it's about what you do with them if you know um some of my previous work on these podcasts i'll talk about it's not what you do it's how you do it that makes a difference so i there are um, patients um, that have uh, had all of their trigger points released and yet their pain continues. So the therapist can't find any more trigger points. They can't find any more trigger points using the TheraWand or Theracane or uh, Easy Magic. There are lots of brands now available on online to buy. These are the handheld ones that you use for pelvic floor uh, self-treatment. Um, what is your approach? How are you approaching things? So I stepped away from using a wand. Uh, I did a video for TheraWand uh, about the same time I stopped teaching and I stopped doing hands-on therapy and started to reduce it um, and, and particularly around the use of trigger point therapy as the cause for symptoms. I might treat them lightly uh, historically, again, more on this in just a moment, but um, I stopped using the wand and I stopped doing trigger point therapy probably about six or seven years ago, completely stopped. I upgraded my knowledge. I um, got mentored by new pain coaches and new um, therapists with a new understanding around um, neural pain and, and neuro pain science. Um, ben Cormack uh, of Core Kinetic uh, really changed my approach. Uh, so I'm grateful for Ben. Uh, Tim Beams, who now works with us at Pelvic Pain Matters. Um, his wife, uh, Steph Poulton, uh, or Steph Beams, um, Steph Paulson, I believe, uh, made a massive, massive difference in in the way that I started to treat and and look at um, at the body and pain and what what contributes to pain um, as well. And it it's really important to 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 remain updated and to keep on moving further forward. So, as patients, if you're a patient, read this article. Be very, very, very aware of of some of the information that's out there. If you're a clinician, please read the article. It's really, really valuable. You can use trigger points in the successful treatment of male pelvic pain. I'm not saying don't, but just be aware around the story that's surrounding it and the reasons why they might be treated. And when you are treating a trigger point, either by yourself um, or a therapist is doing it, be gentle. Right? Genuinely, please be gentle. It's very easy to piss it's very easy to annoy your pelvic pain symptoms and wind them right up uh, and for the symptoms to be agitated and, and to be really, really um, mobilized. And then the whole pelvis can be really, really wound up. Now, for some people, that might be really beneficial. I know when I had my massages, I loved a deep tissue massage, hard and firm and painful. But it didn't make me feel much better. I felt exhausted, and maybe in the short term I might have felt better, but it didn't change things long term. If we're applying um, high pressure over a prolonged period of time to these uh, uh, um, very sensitive, tender um, spots uh, in the fascia or within the muscle or the myofascial uh, regions of the body, then you can wind pelvic pain up. You're better off being gentle with them, finding a bit of a response. So if you apply pressure to a trigger point, find um, a, a level of comfort for yourself or for your patient. Find a level of comfort and then work within that comfort. Don't please don't push too hard because that can wind symptoms right up and then they might remain wound up for, for a period of time. Um. So trigger points do not cause pain. You might find trigger points in a patient with pelvic pain, but you can also find trigger points that have 
that are there without having any pain or, or, or any dysfunction. And you can find this on your own hand. Um, if you take the fleshy part um, in between your thumb and your forefinger and you squeeze in there. So I've got my right hand here. I'm taking the forefinger and thumb of my left hand. My forefinger is on the palm of my left hand. My thumb of my left hand is pinching on top of the back of my hand effectively. And I'm squeezing my two fingers together. I can find about three or four trigger points that sensitive spots that have a twitch response that refer pain to my little finger and my ring finger across the palm of my hand. There's nothing wrong with my hand. OK, but I can find a trigger point there and I'm using trigger points in bunny ears and in inverted commas here. It doesn't mean I have dysfunction in my hand. It doesn't mean I'm more susceptible to injury because of that. I can find it in my left side. I can find them through my jaw, through my temple, uh, in my chest. There are loads and loads of them. I have no dysfunction. Trigger points are not the cause of pain. Be aware of this. They might be present and you can treat them, but treat them gently. Don't wind up the system. Um, and just be mindful of the message that's being peddled around the cause of pain here. Please read the article. Please look beyond the pelvic floor um, and pelvic floor dysfunction as the only thing that's going on in male pelvic pain, in chronic pelvic pain syndrome and chronic prostatitis. If you do look beyond the pelvic floor and you do look beyond just the pelvic floor and its dysfunction, then you are more likely to get more results more of the time. Not just short term, I mean long term results. That's a Friday takeaway. My name's Carl Monaghan. I hope you found the content beneficial and interesting. Please do uh, comment, subscribe, reach out, pelvicpainmatters at gmail.com. I'd love to hear from you.